speaker tonight, we have Rabbi Nathan Levy. Um, if you don't mind, I will read what you sent me. I don't remember right, I should have memorized this. Uh, he is the Interfaith and Social Action Consultant for the Board of Deputies of British Jews. Rabbi Levy is an environmental liaison to the Chief Rabbi Lord Sachs and the co-author of Sharing Eden, Green Teachings from Jews, Christians and Muslims. And I'd like to say the co-author for the Muslim chapter is actually the wife of Professor Abdul Halim here at SOAS. Mm. He holds an MA in Jewish Studies from King's College London and is currently pursuing a doctorate in Environmental Theology at Bristol University. Please show a very warm, warm welcome to Rabbi Nathan Levy. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, um, Ramadan Mubarak. Um, I know I'm in a very dangerous position because I'm standing between you and your food. So I'll try to be terse and quick in what I'm going to say. And in fact, it's a real honor to be here, more than you know, because I almost wasn't here. You see, I work for the Board of Deputies, and that represents all of Anglo Jewry, and it's a lot of voices. And some of those voices, when I said, I've been invited by honored with the invitation to come and speak. They said, oh no, you can't go and speak at an Iftar event. You can't speak because it'll raise disagreement, it'll raise tension between our two communities. There's much that we have to be tense about. And I tell the people who told me this, the story, and it seemed to work, which is why I'm here, I wanted to share the story with you too. Um, there's a story about a synagogue and in the synagogue, a new rabbi comes in to the synagogue and he sees at a pivotal moment in prayer, some people are standing and some people are sitting and the standers are yelling at the sitters and the sitters are yelling at the standers and it's a big mess. And the rabbi goes, wait a minute, this can't be right. All this struggle, all this fighting, all this debate, let's go find somebody who really knows what the true so they go to the oldest member of the synagogue and they say to that person, please, sir, venerable man, you have been here when the synagogue was just founded. Is the tradition to stand in prayer? And the old man thinks, he says, that is not our tradition. Ah, is it the tradition to sit in prayer? And the old man says, no, that is not our tradition. And so the rabbi says, but what am I going to do? Every time this moment happens, people just start arguing. And the old man looked at himself and says, that's our tradition. <laughs> <laughs> Arguments help shape a good tradition. And I want to explain this a little bit more. When I myself was in learning and seminary to be a rabbi, I was sitting there and I had what's called a chavruta, a learning partner, and he was horrible. I would say yes and he would say no. I would say the law goes this way and he would say the law goes that way. I went to my mentor, my rabbi, my teacher, I said to him, I want out. I don't want to be with someone who disagrees with everything I say. And he says, I will tell you a story. My mentor, my teacher said to me, you know, if you have a diamond, how much must you polish the diamond? I don't know. You need something equally strong. Spinning the other way. What do they use to polish a diamond? Another diamond. Spinning the opposite way. To polish a diamond, you must take another diamond of equal strength and rub against each other. It says, you have a blessing. You've been given someone who disagrees with you to polish you. And you want to let go of that? Be thankful. A diamond rubs against you. It polishes you. It makes you and I think, for our tradition, we should be thankful for what we can agree to, what we do share, but also the bits that may polish us. I want to share the first beginning, the earliest DNA. It's going to be challenging. Go with me a little bit on a story, a journey. It goes back a long time ago, but it's going to actually start with next week. Because as you know, we're both lunar people. Our calendars are both based on the, on the moon. So as Ramadan will end, our month called Elul will begin. And as we go into Elul, I will begin as the rabbi 
to blow this. Do you know what this is? A horn. It's a horn. It's a, it's a ram's horn. A horn from a ram. Imagine it going in there like a ram. Um, it's a ram's horn. And why do we blow it? Because Elul, the month of Elul, leads into the, another month, at the end of that lunar month. And that will become the Jewish New Year. The Jewish New Year, we read on that day, the combination of all this blowing of the ram's horn will be a moment where we read about the binding that Abraham bound his son, in our tradition that is Yitzhak, Isaac, bound his son to an altar, was about to sacrifice his beloved son, and instead saw a ram caught in the thicket by its horns and sacrificed the ram in its place. Familiar story? Yeah. yeah. That's the second day of the Jewish New Year, we read that. The first day, we read a very difficult story for our two people, our two traditions. And that is the moment where the prophet Abraham and the prophetess Sarah turn to Hagar, the handmaiden, and to Hagar's son, Abraham's own son, Ishmael, Ismael, and say, get out, get out of my tent. Get out and leave and go into the desert. Difficult tale. Hagar takes her son Ishmael. They go out into the desert, they're near death. Luckily, they find the well, they find the life. Ishmael will become a leader of his people, a prince among his people. This is a familiar story as well, is it not? With some variation, some interesting variation. Let me ask you. Why tell such a difficult story about the prophet Abraham, the prophet of Sarah, sending out, pushing away the beloved son Yishmael? Difficult story. That's the beginning of the new year. A strange story to begin thing. What a difficult term and text. It doesn't sit well. It's always challenged me. I want to share the challenge with you and I want to tell you, ask you a question. It's a big group, but feel free to answer this. I'm going to go back into the story of the ram. Remember, the ram is sitting there, caught in the thicket, and Abraham is about to sacrifice his son, and God sends a messenger, an angel, and says, don't sacrifice your son. There's a ram there, and he goes and he takes the ram, and then the angel calls to him and says, I will bless you and all your offsprings after you. And then, I'll give you the last line from the Torah. Here we go. What's wrong with this last line? By Shev Abraham, Abraham returns to his young men from the mountain. And they rose, Abraham and the young men, from the mountain. And they went together to Beersheba. And Abraham dwelt in Beersheba. Mm. <laughs> there doesn't seem to be a problem. Let me, let me all sort of give it over. Abraham is there with Isaac. And Isaac is on the altar, about to be sacrificed. And Abraham turns and sacrifices the ram instead. And then Abraham goes home, back to Beersheba. Who's missing from that story? Ishmael. Well, Ishmael. Ah, excellent, excellent. Ishmael is missing, but he has already been pushed out to the desert. Who's the person who's missing is Isaac. Isaac stayed at the mountain. What happened to Isaac? Isaac never came down. So we have a commentator called Rashi. And Rashi says, Rashi says, their father had brought upon them great questions, great turmoil. And though they can't answer the turmoil, and they say to each other, brother, we can share our questions, that we have no answers. As I ask the questions afterwards, because the, the call to prayer is coming. It's now, actually. And so, from that moment, that difficult moment, that birth pang, those questions, that leads Isaac and Ishmael, the fathers of Judaism and Islam together, to sit together at a well, to share their story. Like we're sharing our story. I hope you will share your story.
and in that tradition, and so that we always remember who we are, one family. I want to blow the shofar, the ram horn for you now. This, I haven't practiced yet. It's not yet the right time, but I'll give it a shot, okay? Bear with me. May we always share, may we always grow, and even our difficult moments, may we polish each other like diamonds. Thank you so much.